Welcome to Ultimate Skincare and Beauty Report. I'm Mary Wink and Warder. Makeup is so much more than an artistic vehicle to enhance face features. Superior makeup can take our minds to a place where imagination is sparked by intense emotion. Joining us this episode is special effects artist Sue Lee to tell us more about her path in the industry as well as her brand of specialty effects makeup. Sue, welcome to Ultimate Skincare and Beauty Report. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Mary. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's great to have you join us. This is very exciting. All right. So having been a professional makeup artist myself at some point in my career, I know how exhilarating each new creation can be. Were you always a special effects artist, or did you have a conventional makeup artistry background before moving into this genre of makeup artistry? Well, there's actually a funny story to that. Um, I initially went to college uh, to become a medical student and um, I thought I was going to become a doctor like every other typical Asian and I took one art class and that was it. I wanted to do medical prosthetics and um, at the time there, uh, I guess medical prosthetics there were not that many jobs and then I discovered special effects and it's the same thing except instead of reconstructing and uh, healing people you're you're killing them turning into zombies it was more fun and creative so I never looked back <laughs> that's fun alright so this unique brand of makeup artistry is it's it's absolutely it's very very creative what was the passion that drove you to become a special effects makeup artist uh, I guess just the novelty of everything I was just so excited and um, so thrilled that you know I can actually do this as a profession and I, I just jumped in um, you know head over heels over special effects and I just I'm still in love with it I discover new things every day it's still so cool to me I can't believe that's actually my job I get to tell people that <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that is. It's quite an honor to be able to do that. So when did the reality TV show competition come into your career? Well, actually, um, uh, everyone knows about, in, in the makeup industry, about the IMATS trade show, and they always have a student competition portion of it. Um, as soon as I graduated school, I entered in um, the student competition portion, and uh, I was the first person out of my school to be accepted in the competition. And even though I didn't place or win anything, um, what the costume I made, the fabrication, um, the scouts for um, Face Off were just, you know, they were like, oh, this is awesome, this is great, you should totally be in the show. So I got scouted, and Face Off was my first job. <laughs> Yay! That's awesome. <laughs> so, so as an artist, what all did being in the competition entail? Um, I guess it was just, it's, it's just like a hundred miles at an hour. You don't have any room for error. Um, if anything, it's more about being disciplined and more about having one shot to do something. And if you if you only have one shot to do something, there's no room for error. You must do everything with authority. And um, it's all about time management. I think you can make dull ideas become great uh, things. And, you know, great ideas can become a complete disaster. It's not just about the art element. It's about, um, you know, just logistics and like trying to manage your time and you know working with things in the studio that you're not familiar with. 
Sure. So what were your expectations going into the competition? Um, well, <laughs> I was very green. Like I said, it was my first job. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I was fresh out of school, literally. And um, I knew I'd be up against some, you know, 10-year season bets. And I was really scared of, you know, going up against these people. But I really did not expect to get as far as I did. And I'm so grateful that, you know, things turned out that way. And, you know, in retrospect, I really wish, you know, I took it easy and wasn't so stressed out all the time. But it, it, it's whatever, you know, you see on the show, all that stress and all the time constraints, there's definitely um, integrity to that. You know, we didn't have time to do almost anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I have worked in a boiler room setting with an intense drive to produce quality in a very short period of time. Um, so in a sense, I um, I had somewhat of an idea of what it's like to go through, um, you know, a competition type setting. What was it like having to create these amazing prosthetic art pieces in a competition setting? I mean, that had to be really stressful. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know what? I don't think a lot of people realize, but if you look carefully, um, during the episode, uh, the old age episode, the one I won, when I'm on the uh, the platform getting judged, my face is completely white because wow. I actually went to the ER the night before. I had an ulcer. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was it was that stressful. So you know when um, when people get sick on the show, it's it's insane. You don't have a day to recover or anything. You need to get out of there. So they gave me some pills and I was back on the show. <laughs> wow. What an amazing turnaround. So yeah. where okay, so you know, all things aside, all certain stress aside, where did you find the time and the mind space to pull inspiration? Where did you get your inspiration? Um I would say like most artists, um uh, most most artists that I've ever talked to in the industry, we're all very similar in the sense that we we um, we're constantly inspired by nature, and we just con con continuously um, have like a memory bank of all these images. Um, you know, that's why I think doing things very realistically comes easier to me since I'm studying animals, people all the time. Um, but other than that, on the show, people don't realize we have. No, we have very, very, very limited access to references, mm -hmm. so um, we just have to pull things out of our heads in a very short amount of time. I think they give you like 20 to 30 minutes to, you know, bring up a great idea that's going to either be responsible for you going home or staying. So. <laughs> wow. Talking about raw inspiration on adrenaline. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta poo it out. There you go. You yeah. <laughs> so, how has being how has being on the show helped to propel your global visibility? Um, well, I definitely uh, saw experienced that firsthand. Um, I did win the one of the hardest uh, competitions to the in the show to date, which is which was the old age challenge. And um, as soon as that was aired. Um, like I said, Face Off was my first job, so most of the images were in my portfolio. Um, yeah. It got me one of the best gigs to, you know, I ever had the chance to work on. It was with um, an Emmy Award makeup artist, Ed French, and uh, we worked on the Pepsi commercial uh, featuring Kyrie Irving uh, that turned him into an old man playing basketball. And it was a huge YouTube hit. It was a viral video, over 26 million views. Um, uh, it might be 2.6. I, I forget. I well, we'll worked check. on we'll another check. video, we'll which we'll got like 26 that. million views. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it had so many views. It was so popular that um, you know they they actually featured it in um, the NBA championships on TV. So it was like it was incredible. It was such a good experience. Yeah, that was absolutely huge. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, okay, so Sue, you personally as an artist, what are your favorite types of prosthetics to create? Well, I guess what's very what comes naturally to me and things that I enjoy making are obviously realistic prosthetics like old age I'm really good at doing that <laughs> as you know um, turning people into uh, different celebrities um, however I would say my personal favorite types of makeup are about um, 
creating these like crazy strong female characters all about girl power, um, making warrior princesses. Um, I'm all about the girl power, so. That's great. <laughs> girl power. <laughs> So, um, so today, <laughs> what has been your favorite creation? Um, well, uh, I believe it was uh, 2012 or 2013. No, it's 2013. I created um, a female goat, I guess, print princess um, for the New York IMAX trade, trade show, and um, it was really pretty. I liked it. It wasn't your typical, um, you know, chronic, Chronicles of Narnia, like, scary, realistic right. uh, creature. It was, like, very dainty. I used, like, very pretty, like, um, uh, uh, I would say Mary Antoinette colors, and it was, wow. it, was, it was very feminine. That's what I liked about it. That's amazing. So, to date, what has been your most recognized creation? Was it the old age? Um, you would think so. However, yeah. it's the female hipster dino dinosaur that I huh. made, and for some reason, there's something about it that I guess just grabs maybe the viewers nowadays, the younger viewers, and you know, I guess it's just very, um, you know, of this generation. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. So, Sue, where can we find out more about your unique brand of prosthetic artwork? Everyone can catch up with me um, at my website. It's at www.sueleesfx.com. Fantastic. All right, Sue, thanks so much for joining us. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you. It's so much fun. All right, catch up with me on my blog, www.beautybeautereport.com, and on Twitter at Beauty Publicist. Everyone, thanks so much for joining us on the Ultimate Skincare and Beauty Report. Have a beautiful and successful week. Bye-bye. Oh,